more winner's side match going on right now in the arena. Yonioski on the hill against Tafe and Tabor at 8-4. The rest of the day, we will see loser's side pool and match five on table one. It is Chang Yulung against Do Tia Tian. Chinese Taipei against Vietnam. And Chang, having won the lag, breaks off. Again, on the loser's side, it is a race to eight. I think you have to make Chang favourite, although Kien has had some good results. Got to the quarter-final of the 2019 World Nine Ball Championship. Well, that, that's an impressive feat, Phil, but like you said, not his best match in the opener for Chang, taking a loss and got a match with a win under his belt on the one-loss side. Now, I would have to consider him a favorite. This is Do Taekien. When he got to the quarterfinal of that World Nine Ball in 2019, in the three matches preceding that round, he beat David Alcady, Chris Melling, and Walid Majid. Well, those are quality wins, and got to consider that run to that quarterfinal. Not much of a fluke with three wins like that. And now you can see Chang a little worried about being next to that brown seven, and can he really get at the two ball? He can get at the right side for the safety. He was trying to get for that cross side bank, and I think the seven had him cut off. One other thing about that 2019 World Nine Ball Championship for Do Taekien, Koping Chung beat him in the quarterfinals, but all of the other wins we mentioned they were all races to 11, so meaningful distances. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'll tell you something about nine ball. Once once you get some confidence, it's amazing how much easier the game becomes. And it's definitely a very mental game. Any stationary sport, always going to be something that plays with, with uh, the positive and the negative. Odd kick here. He's got to maybe draw the ball here. Try and get underneath this blue two. He looks like he can hit just past the side. Maybe slide the cue ball towards the purple. So the first attacking opening falls to Chang. We saw him on table one yesterday, losing 9-4 to Wu Kun Lin in a brutal match for both of them in the first round. That was a, a cruel draw. But he rebounded on the, the one loss side, beating David Hopkin 8-2. So one in one for him. Also one in one for Do Taekien. He started off with a win, beating Marco Dorenberg 9-5, but then lost heavily 9-1 to Jonas Suto Camino. The prospect from Spain. Yeah, and you never know on those kind of matches, especially with Pseudo. He can really get going, sit you down in the chair for some time. And good to see Chang back out playing. Started to talk about it a little bit yesterday, how he stands up off the ball and Oh, he's going to hate that. A big mistake. And I think the slick table got him a little bit yesterday and maybe a little bit there as well. But really an effortless motion, moving the cue ball easily and possesses a lot of power. Wondering if that more upright stance leans towards getting power a little easier.
A little bit of a sweater there coming down the table with the cue ball, but he'll take it. Oh, what a big win for the young lady from Korea, South Korea. So so uh, over Tony Drago, but and fun to watch. But hate to see Tony exit the tournament. Always exciting and a pleasure to watch play the game. Well, Chang Yulung won the tactical battle at the start of this rack. And then reaped the rewards by winning the opener. He leads 1-0. I can tell you, winner's side pool for the day is over. The last match completed, Jani Uski from Finland beating Tafen Tabor 9-4. So there's still plenty of action out there, but it's now all on the, the loser's side. And that means all of the matches from here on in to the end of the day are race to eights. It's much more agreeable to be on the winner's side, Jeremy, when you've got that safety net. These guys, they know if they lose, it's to the airport. Yes, it is. And, you know, that's how the game's evolving, where every match is so much pressure. It means so much, you know, points, ranking points, getting into more events in the future, specialty events. So much evolving in the game. and. Of course, these players, they're set up just to try and play their best pool, and that's what we all want to see. The winner of this match in the next loser's side round will play either Gabriel Vasilacci of Romania or, more likely, Pius Lavutis of Lithuania. Lavutis leading 7-3 on the hill. Great break off there. Anytime. You know, the one exits into the sides so quickly and you get such good spreads, that means the timing was really good. Not really delivering the thump on the balls like a SVB or a Kachi, but still getting great results. I'll tell you, Chang was a player that I watched a lot whenever he came to the States, and it would only be for the bigger events, the U.S. Open, maybe some type of big event in Vegas, something like that, but... And I would say at the moment, not saying he was an arrogant or kind of cocky player at all, but definitely had a little swagger about him. And he, I don't think he's quite got that back just yet. He needs a few more matches under his belt, gain a little more confidence. But when he gets going, a very, very incredible player that, again, possesses a lot of power and pockets the balls, usually with ease. Glad you said usually. Come on. You know, kind of subbed that in for the commentator's curse, that usually, but now a great opportunity for Vietnam's Kian. Not quite as smooth as what we're used to seeing from of course, the Vietnamese players, all the Asian contingent, real flowing strokes for the most part. Much outside pocket.
You're absolutely right, Jeremy, as always. That delivery is not smooth. It's staccato, isn't it? Yeah, it's the type of delivery that, you know, sometimes the nerves are really high and it can affect you. But at the same time, when we see strokes like this, it's the type that we're, when it gets going, it can be very effective, kind of like maybe that run he made in that, that World Championships just a few years ago. So when Chang missed the ball, he should have potted. He must have anticipated being punished, and he most certainly was. It's Woolwich. Another Vietnamese player taking shape over on table 15 in a match against Pia Filler. It's 4-4 between Filler and Phuong Nam Pham. Marcus Martin has taken the first rack against Adrian Pollard. Patrick Mountain, 2-1 down to Mats Shetner of Norway. Christian Reimering and Ian Pikeniak, 2-2. Benjamin Belhassen from France, a 3 0 up on Michael Yednak. Kalin Varbanov, 5 0 up on Lawrence Thomason. Roman Hebler back in action after that devastating defeat yesterday against Johan Chu when he was 8 4 ahead and had chances. He eventually lost 9 8. Well, he's back on the horse and he's won the first rack against Sebastian Batkowski. Snooker player David Lilly, 3 0 up on Anthony Brabin of Cyprus. In a match more advanced, Benji Buckley, 6-4 upon Robert Braga. And Yuma Dormer from Germany is on the hill against Miguel Silva at 7-2. Well, I think that's as close to a scratch as you can get without actually doing so. Yeah, I caught the one what looked like maybe a little thick. Actually looked like he had a little inside spin. Don't see that a ton. Maybe a, some of the players put a, just a touch on there, but that seemed to have a bit more. No real choice here but to attack going over the brown seven. The first and paramount requirement with that shot, make contact. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he did have a rollout choice, a push-out choice. Not a ton of places to go, but he felt good about it. Very easy. That's the long-distance jump. You, hard, to, hard to believe that you could actually curve the cue ball with the jump and any miss hit on the cue ball. Okay, funny little position shot. Kind of two rails most likely. Across for the blue two in the lower right corner. Could come all the way for the side. All right, he's going to play with a lot more angles, so maybe he's going to come down below the pink for the blue two in the left middle. I may even use the third rail, that being the bottom cushion. It's going to be perfect speed, it looks like. While we're in the early stages of this match, Jeremy, I must ask you, yes, we commentated on Stuart Bingham earlier, then he followed up with that comprehensive win over Sullivan Clark. He's made a very good impression, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, just like his opponents, I think, it's easy to see that, you know, that most of the shots are there and, and maybe some more that you normally don't see. We saw some safeties in his first match that from some difficult situations, you're kind of wondering what he's going to come up with. And every time it was pretty effective and it was more of a grinding kind of mentality as well. It wasn't always a snooker. Sometimes it's just leaving the long shot, making it tough on his opponent. But once the match got going, you saw him start to move the cue ball pretty easily and Really made sense of most most situations.
the other one that's doesn't seem to be as much of a problem as it is for others that cross over like that is the break shot. Okay. Looks like he may have gotten just ideal here on the purple. Able to pinch back a little bit, take a little bit of a cut on the green six. May get a hair movement off the eight. You see, even though it's a quick kind of moving stroke, it looks pretty straight overall. Okay, he's going to have a big stretch here and possibly the rest coming out. tell you that type of technique that type of movement on the cue stick doesn't always you know bode so well for for having the best touch or shooting some of the lighter shots especially under pressure but it's looked good so far Should be a routine nine ball, if there is such a thing. And it goes. Do Taekien has recovered from the loss of the first rack to lead by two racks to one. Now, we were just talking about Stuart Bingham and his progress today. Well, his next opponent tomorrow in winner's qualification will be Skylar Woodward, who we caught up with after his last match centre stage. You made hard work for yourself there, but eventually you got the job done. Yeah, you know, I feel uh, honestly kind of fortunate to get through. Um, I know he's a good player, and I definitely didn't play my best, but yeah, I just feel good to get through. We talked about it there recently when you've gone deep in tournaments. You've done it from the one loss side, but on this occasion you entered winner's qualification round, and you seem to be picking up first team. Yeah, I'm getting better every tournament. What was it? The UK Open, I lose first round come through then I lose second round the next tournament and I come through so shoot I'm just happy to win my first two this time you know and be through the winner's qualification now so it feels good to actually you know be in the winner's side. We've seen you using a new bit of gear as well at the table but again you try to take from Q Tech but obviously it seems to be putting you in good stead with a few nice kicks in that last match. Yeah for sure I got a yeah new Q and uh, plays great I mean it's it's great, honestly, the new one. Well, for you, it means you've got one more match to reach the last 64. We know that your Moscone Cup place is more or less secured, but how much would it mean to you to do that by snapping off the first match we made? Um, you know, just making the Moscone Cup is amazing, but if I can win this tournament and like, really seal it and, and get the win, it would be, it would mean actually the world to me. To Interesting thoughts from Skylar Woodward, who no doubt gets better as tournaments go on, so I don't think we should read too much into his last performance. And, you know, Q-Tech are going to play a big part in that match because Stuart Bingham's break cue is also provided by Q-Tech. Yeah, actually, the cue he's playing with is Q-Tech. Uh, he switched, uh, you know, got to practicing with it, liked it. What I'm going to do as this match goes on, I will let you know the winner's qualification draw in its entirety. There are some gems in there. Yeah, of course, everything, every match means something, these events, whether it be 
you know, a great player great, getting a, you know, soft draw at the beginning, something they deserve because of their seating and, you know, getting the arm going, getting used to the table and others trying to improve, getting used to conditions, maybe their first matchroom event. But once we start to get to the third days when the matches really start to heat up and we see some score lines and some excitement that uh, really makes these events and sets up the rest of the days left. A little draw stroke here. Tell you what, he's been pretty solid. And, you know, we talked about his technique, but I think it's a little bit of a fooler, you know, if you watch. Pre-strokes when he first gets down are pretty quick, but then he starts to settle them as he makes more of them. And it seems like as balls go in, the stroke is settling as well. Has to be remembered also, he didn't lose the first racket as the result of an offensive mistake. He was outdueled tactically. So he's not missing. He's another one, Do Taekien, who will no doubt be greatly looking forward to the Asian Open in his home country in October. little bit of a decel there and I wouldn't say decel that's maybe the wrong way to say it but just not a real release of the cue and that's what the quicker kind of pre-stroke sometimes leads to a quicker backswing which is usually about the only way we you know, don't get through the ball you know, exactly how we want it I think he still attacks here on the cut if he feels like he could beat the side pockets going back and forth with the cue ball now, this is the type of shot where, again, the technique makes a difference. Because if you get a little quick, sometimes that side spin doesn't catch as quick as you want. And both middle side pockets come into play. Oh, he hit that really nice. Probably got more out of it than he expected, trying to avoid those side pockets. And although he didn't want to make contact with the Brown 7, at least by going into the middle of the table, that provides quite a wall to hide behind. Yeah, I'm not sure how easily he can reach it. I think pretty easily, but he should shave this six. He's close enough to it to be accurate. Just move it over. Go up the table with the cue ball. Looks like he's going to put it on the side rail along with the cue ball on the opposite side rail. Yeah, that's the shot I like. Now he hit it a bit thicker than he wanted. Left a two rail kick here on the six, I believe, between the seven eight. Interesting, he's elevating here. Maybe having to swerve the ball touch with English. Not going to leave anything easy, and that's half the battle. like a high ball he can play the six to the upper right catching the long rail on the left the top rail and kind of drift the cue ball back down table on the right side for the seven in the lower left big shot here early Jeremy what a peach the best shot of the match Okay, it's a small sample size, but 
Nevertheless, that was excellent. Oh, he's shown us all. The cue ball's been nice. When he gets in position, he keeps it nice. And now come with the long one. And I don't know if you could tell there, but the stroke's starting to smooth out a little bit. Yes, and he wins the rack. Maybe a couple of shots early by chipping in the nine ball. That was the little bonus there as he knocked in the seven. It was always a, a likelihood. And so three racks in succession now for Do Te Kian. He leads Chang Yu Lung 3-1. Let me give you this winner's qualification round. I won't be able to do it all in the break between this rack and the next, but I'll give it a start. It begins at 11.30 local time tomorrow. Albin Aushan defending champion against Hunter Lombardo. Duong Kwakwang against Daniel Masseon. Wojciech Shevchik up against Georgi Georgiev. Mark Bajdabosh against Andre Ionescu. Kopin Yi, Omar Al Shaheen. Naoki Oi, Matthias Snigotsky. Petri Makinen, Alexa Pashelsh. Francesco Candela faces Max Lechner. What about this one? Jason Shaw against Johan Chur. Mouth watering. Aloysius Yap, Moritz Neuhausen. Imran Majid, he plays Dennis Graber. And I will give you the rest after this rack. Well, given the quality of the six ball in the last rack, plus the way he's played in winning the last three, he must be feeling confident. Yeah, that last six ball in the last game, a lot of players can learn from that. Kind of smooth the ball around the table, and that's what you have to do out here. Trust the bed. Get to hitting at the ball, overhitting it, the pocket becomes a little smaller, and really you start to lose cue ball control. And this two ball must be awfully tight for him not to be really considering attacking. We had a nice similar shot in the last rack. On the five ball, was it? So, all right, if he's queuing downward, no, he's queuing kind of middle of the ball, so maybe back and forth, cutting this ball in. Oh, he's going to play the safety. Yeah, he may have left the gap here. No, he's gotten enough on it. We've talked about Do Taekien's achievements. Chang Yulung, 41 years of age. He's won the China Open twice, 2010 and 2014. Beat Jeff Ignacio in the final in 2014. Chang Junlin in the semi-finals. Two wonderful titles to capture. All right, wanting to knock the two around table and hold the cue ball. Really something special there. Yeah, he's got the moves, hasn't he? Yes, he does. And again, I don't quite see the confidence I'm used to seeing just yet. But again, back on this you know, World Nine Ball Tour stage, and it's going to take a little bit. Chang was fifth in the US Open in 2016, beating Carlo Biardo 11 4 before losing to Dennis Acolio. And in 2019, made the semi final of the US Open. Well, that's the place where I watched him the most. He's made so many US Opens, played him a couple times in, in the US Open as well. It would go a long ways here. Lots of congestion out, out and about. And I mean, maybe not congestion, but little groups to where you could hide the cue ball or the two. Valiant effort, but with the table open and no obvious clusters, no obvious stumbling blocks. 
Chang having forced the mistake, or forced the foul at least, now should cut the deficit in half. Yeah, and that two row kick on the you know the TV tables we call it, the main tables, seems to be a common theme. Not getting enough spin off that second rail. Oh, this may have gone a little hard here at this glaze on the rail. And like I said, just not quite himself yet. With ball in hand, that was really clumsy. Well, especially because you didn't have to get the premium angle with the, such an open bottom half of the table. He could have put a lot of places for the three and just worked the cue ball back for the four. Do Tae Kien will be very surprised to be back at the table so early. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there he just didn't make it a real decision with the cue ball. Just decided, let me make the ball and let run the cue ball. And when you don't put it all together, that's where misses can really kind of step in. Okay, kind of forced to take on. Not an easy three being on the rail. Wow, he's going to jack up here instead of going forward. Oh, this is maybe a little bit of a mental mistake. Oh, he didn't do either. <laughs> didn't draw the ball. Still played the short side position. Just wanted to be a little closer to the pink. And you got to appreciate the accuracy there. Feel elevating the cue. Now firing the ping four down the left-hand side. Long rail. Like what I'm saying here. I will not be second-guessing his technique anymore. No, a pretty straight delivery. And again, when the nerves are flowing, maybe everyone gets a little quicker. But it's definitely settling in. And a bit more technique like his other countryman, Thien, is it? We saw, or at least I first saw him at the Premier League this year. say though here although it's been a good run out Chang's been the architect of his own downfall ball in hand knocked in one and this to the next and I tell you the, the real problem for Chang besides what it's going to be a 4-1 deficit in this race to eight it being a one loss side match as well so his opponent doesn't doesn't look like he's going to give much back. Yeah, Do Tae Kien, halfway to victory, leading by four acts to one. Now I'll continue on with this winner's qualification draw. Radislav Babica takes on Fedor Gorscht. Dimitris Lukatos faces Niels Fein. It's Thomas Kaplan against Mieszko Fatunski in an all-Polish battle. Antonios Kakaris will face Wu Kun Lin. Karol Skaversky has the task of trying to stop the progress of Joshua Filler. James Aranas faces Shane Van Boning. Carl Naderberg is up against Jonas Suto Camino. It's Chris Melling against Kan Salim, the conqueror of Coping Chung today. Tobias Bongers will meet Mohamed Sufi. Skyler Woodward takes on Stuart Bingham. Tyler Steyer against Sanyan Pilovanovic. Dimitri Jungo, Kostas Kukiadakis. Elliot Sanderson will play Mario He. Michael Schneider, Victor Zelinski. Simon Corral up against David Alcady. Chang Jun Lin 
Yoni Uski. From Greece, Alexander Kazakis has the task of trying to blunt the edge of snooker player Gary Walson. Konrad Yuzhushin against Jan van Lierop. The pride of Hungary, Oliver Sholnoki against Robbie Capito. How about this one? Ralph Suke against Torsten Homan. They're good friends. They've been travelling companions for years. Both world champions and they go head-to-head -head on home soil. And then finally, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, the world nine ball tour, rankings number one and world nine ball champion, will take on Emil Andre Gangflo. I'm sure you'll agree that round, just to get to the last 64, is full of gems. Yeah, that's why you want to win your first two. You're going to have to play a tough match in the third, but you get to that position, you just have to win one out of two matches. You get two stabs at it to make that final 64 where it starts single elimination. Now on the loser's side here, give you some scores. Pia Filler, the wife of Joshua Filler, 6-5 upon Phong Nam Pham of Vietnam. Marcus Martin has made a good start against Adrian Pollard, leading 4-0. Matt Shetner on the hill against Patrick Mountain at 7-1. So I suppose you could say Patrick's got a mountain to climb. Senorita Zar 3-1 upon Sergio Lagunas. And Christian Reimering is 6-2 upon Ian Pekinyak. One to the centre. Path through to the two, although not exactly ideal. Not a bad break. No, and nothing obvious on the two, but looks like with those clusters there, he can play a cross side bank in a somewhat free manner. Trying to hold position below the red three, while also playing like I said, the two-way shot, the safety and the offense at the same time. An abundance of cover. Got some results for you. Jaspal Singh Bamotra of India has beaten James Devlin 8-2. Jose Alberto Delgado, former semi-finalist in one of these major matchroom ranking events. He's through 8-3 over Patrick Li Kiao. Yuma Dorma, how about this for a result? Considering how well Miguel Silva played in Spain. Dorma's won 8-2. And Benji Buckley, very knowledgeable player from the UK. He's doubled up on Robert Braga, winning 8-4. And I believe it was here last year where Delgado made that deep run. Mm. As for Chang, he's just getting deeper into trouble. Although the, the four nestling up to the three there might help his cause, might save his bacon. Yeah, I'm not sure if the three goes to the lower left. That's a good camera angle there telling me. If it does, you have to be just perfect with the cue ball. And he's going to play the safety. And I wonder, excuse me, Phil, I wonder, I guess he's going to cut the two down below the four three and kind of just subtly try to go one rail behind the eight with the cue ball. Now that's a, a proper cluster and 
a real headache for Chang. Yeah, the ball's laid kind of awkwardly to get, you know, the cue ball froze to the eight. So it was going to be hard to totally cut him off. Chang, who missed his last kick, still favored to hit this one. But now he's on two fouls, and I'll tell you, when he's on, you're on two fouls like this, there's a lot of ways with congestion to, to maybe eliminate a kick com completely. Like you might bump the two behind the seven and just narrow, you know, just move the cue ball an inch up behind the three. A lot of little ways to go at it. This is where you want to keep the two ball near another object ball, trying to cut off, you know, different sides of the two ball to kick at. Could try to run out as well. Yeah, I like my first shot, really. I think, anyways, I don't know. Now, you could just try, again, try to run out, shoot the two, draw off the three, open the three for the same pocket. Maybe play a 5-9 combination to end the rack. Don't want to hit this too hard, though. Just a little nip draw. And even though Chang missed his last two kicks and is on two fouls, you know, unless the ball's lay in a special position, Kian realizes that Chang's going to probably be a favorite to hit any kick shot. So why not try and put it in your own hands to clear the table and take a 5-1 lead? Have to consider the combo here. Looks like he... Actually can play short side for the five in the left middle pretty easily. Looks like if he came above, though, five nine combination, not difficult. Knocking in balls with efficiency, keeping control of the cue ball. Very much the superior player in this match. And Ray is there, if you notice. He, I noticed that the last few shots, he kind of takes his paws at the cue ball and then takes one more pump into the stroke. Normally, that's a, a scenario where a player that started at a very young age and just kind of got used to do that. See that right there? One more pump after the paws. F and Ray is known for that. Well, the good chip, Chang Yu Lung needs a pump because right now it's taking on water and sailing to victory, it seems, is Do Taekien. 5-1 ahead. Referee Scott McMillan just having a word there. Don't know what that's about. What I do know is that Kien has been really good value for this lead. Yeah, I'm not sure. It looked like he pointed towards maybe out of the arena and Ken just kind of moved his jacket quickly from that position. So maybe some obstructing view of some sort. A few results to tell you about in this loser's round two. 
On table 11, Eric Kohler has defeated Rainer Lahr from Estonia, 8-3. Armin Mahmoudi and Taif and Tabor are two each. Noel Van Seed, 5-3 up on Florian Vogler. Fitim Haridanaj from here in Germany. Good player, has beaten Jim Telfer, 8-6. The winner of this match will play Piers Labutis because the Lithuanian overcame Gabriel Vasilashi, 8-4. I'll tell you what, fortunate for Chang, that seven ball, the brown seven got in the way, a 2-9 combination. It wouldn't have been easy, but he was certainly shot at it. He liked his chances. Awkward safety coming up. I don't really see much I like. Maybe trying to come back on the nine with the cue ball, just kind of moving the two subtly. I guess he announced push out. Didn't like anything, just shooting directly at it. I've received news from our next match on the main table. It will be Cledio Cacci of Albania, the younger brother of Eklund Cacci, up against, from right here in Germany, Alexander Usbek. Just everything getting away from him. Not a difficult safety there at all. A little surprising, actually. Merkian pushed out, too, but there wasn't a whole lot of choices. But laying the cue ball down behind the six, normally for Chang, not a big deal there, but again, got away. You can never call that a glaring error, but it was a misjudgment and a mistake that Chang badly needed to see. Yeah, one I didn't expect at all. Not an easy shot by any means, having to put a little draw stroke from some distance. But like you said, now Chang's got to get going. Got a little funny here. Don't know if he can put enough inside spin to get left of the nine. I have to just come above the nine a little bit and take a bit of a cut on the pink. The six is handy, so position not hard. I'll tell you what, this is not the display you expect from a former US Open semi-finalist. In fact, only four years removed from that. Not the display you expect at all. 
Yeah, but to be fair, we've seen some struggles from a lot of players that had to take some time off from the, the bigger events via pandemic. But after getting a win yesterday, and kind of felt like even though the first match wasn't his best, he would start to settle in. It just hadn't happened. Chang reprieved. It wasn't an easy four ball. Seemed to miss time that a little bit using the rest, but he's just about made the journey up for the nine. Not greatly convincing, it was his second bite of the cherry. He continues to grab that shoulder. I wonder whether that's a problem. Certainly the scoreline is, but at least he's got a, a rack back. Chang Yu Lung now trails 5 2. Some results coming in on table 25. Mickey Kraus, very comfortable winner over Sander Kont of Estonia, winning 8 1. Talal Albulushi, he's beat Marco Dorenberg 8 6. Chris Alexander leads Ruben Omar de Campo 6 3. David Lilly, 4-3 up on Anthony Braben. And if you remember yesterday, we were all feeling a little sorry for Roman Hebler after blowing that match against Johan Chua. Well, Hebler's now on the hill against Sebastian Batkowski at 7-2. Another winner, Matt Shetner, has beaten Patrick Mountain 8-2. Sometimes, of course, the break shot can get you going. It's good starters and whatnot. And a good starter here on the blue two, but a lot of traffic trying to get back for the red three on the bottom of your screen and the bottom rail. There's a route between the five and seven off of two cushions, but does that really get you anywhere coming back across with the nine and the six there? You may have to gamble with a little speed on the cue ball here. driving in a big city couldn't avoid the congestion yeah he was trying to he put more extra speed there anticipating a kiss off of another ball and just hoping the kiss worked out for him and drew a little better position on the red three again he could shave this if he wanted go up the table could go behind the purple with the cue ball somewhat bringing the three up the right side he went behind the six, kept it simple. Probably left a little easier kick than he anticipated. But don't think the edge of the three is there.
with a little bit of right hand side if he can't get through to the three the kicking stick is most certainly an option thinking here he can see this I agree especially the way he was warming up to get down on the ball Really nice and a big shot after a couple misses we really haven't seen from Kian the entire match. All true, but the safety from Chang left an awful lot to be desired, didn't it? Yeah, it's almost like he simplified the safety because he was worried about not executing, you know, a couple other options that were maybe a hair more difficult, but definitely doable. All right, little top left English coming out of the top left corner, two rails to the center of the table. Playing the pink in the right middle. All right, no reason to come across. Out to the center. Play from above the six. A seven over the right middle. And this should get him to six games and another four game deficit. Given the gulf in standard between these two in this match, I think a 6-2 scoreline is entirely reflective. And 6-2 it is in favour of Do Taekien. Scores around the arena here at the Hotel Esperanto Conference Centre in Fulda, Germany. Pia Filler, 6. Fuang Nam Pham, five. Marcus Martin, six two up on Adrian Pollard. Senarip Azar from Sweden on the hill against Sergio Lagunis at seven one. Christian Weimering and Ian Pikinyak, six six. Pikinyak on the comeback trail there. Benjamin Belhassen, six two up on Michael Yednak. And Roman Hebler has won. He goes into day three after an 8-2 win over Sebastian Batkowski, who performed with distinction at the World Nine Ball Championship in Poland. If my memory serves me correct, I think he was the last surviving pole in the tournament. So a really good win for Hebler there. David Lilly, his lead over Anthony Brabin reduced to 5-4. As Doe breaks off, needing just two more racks for victory. Yeah, just inches from the blue two, making the one on the side. But I believe the eight has got the corner pocket cut off. So awkward queuing. And another situation just a few games ago, he could see the two just a foot or so away, two feet away from it, decide to push out just because there wasn't much there. And we may see something similar here. Is he going to try and push the two past the eight? 
come down to the bottom rail and maybe just try and get a one ball snooker. It's not, you know, the most friendly feeling shot to shoot at because you know you're not leaving anything or at best you're leaving a very easy kick shot in return and maybe even more. So you're trying to come up on the eight with a little spin? Difficult shot here. Okay, like I said, he just kept it simple. The good thing is he executed the snooker, even though the kick shot shouldn't be too difficult to get a return snooker or at least leave him something tough. May you try to kick this in, Phil? in the side and just kind of hold the ball right there understanding that if it hits a little short it'll come across above the 4-5 on the left side of the table like that see how it's coming across above the 4-5 a lot of cover there and you can take a chance at making that kick shot as well tell you being near the rail with the cue ball may have to elevate a little bit here yeah and he he sees that he needs to hold the line not let it spread on him this is the type these players make a bit more often than you would anticipate I think the most important thing there in terms of the word make was make contact what a gift Chain needs to do a little better with ball in hand than he did earlier, getting from the same two to the three. And he ended up quite a bit short. Well, did roll out decently. Now he's just got to worry about if he slides over a bit, no awkward cueing over the green six. Can't get much closer to the pink. Some applause there. It emanated from table 17 where Senator Pazar has comfortably defeated Sergio Lagunas 8 1. Okay, a little flat here on the purple. Green six does not go by the nine, so he's got to get to the short side or back side, if you will. Six doesn't go by the eight either, so it's got to be below it. And this is going to leave a tester. This cue ball is going to travel this rail and from nowhere. Nothing easy. And I'll tell you, what's he do with the cue ball to hold position for the brown seven, let alone make a difficult shot on the green six? And just couldn't hide his irritation there. He's playing to a standard which is well below what he would normally expect from himself. And... In Q Sports, that's tough to take, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard to leave it behind, and he's got to kind of roll this as well, unless he's going to try and bump the seven off of one cushion. Uh, he was trying to go three cushions to the center. Chang's return to the world stage, so far at least, and time's running out, has not been good. Anthony Raga of the Philippines is taking on Ingo Alamberti of Germany over on table two. That's the sixth match of the day over there. Yeah, Raga, another big name in the making from the Philippines. A little chink in the armor there from Kian. And Raga, like so many, you know, 
Got to get used to the setting out here in the World Nine Ball Tour, playing with the best players in the world under these tournament conditions. Now, we've had a lot more of that in the Philippines, and that's going to bode well for the young man. But I've heard nothing but great things. Only got to see him play a little bit, and of course, a little bit online. But Tell you what, even though Chang is really toiling, though Tokien doesn't want to take his foot off the gas. Dangerous, that. Yeah, especially because the break shot really hasn't been that bad for Chang. It's been some other things that have been a definitely subpar. He's certainly got a modicum of hope now at 6 3. Might well have been. Looking at a big deficit with his opponent on the hill. Two players are simultaneously on the hill on table 10. Christian Reimering and Ian Pekinyak. It is 7-7. Marcus Martin has beaten Adrian Pollard 8-2. And while we're in between racks here, let's just take another closer look at table 2. I like Jeremy. Interested to see Anthony Raga. When you hail from the Philippines, Jeremy, and you've got a good reputation, it doesn't matter what age it is, you know that you can play the game. Yeah, I don't. You know, we have some players in the event that are taking advantage of playing with the best in the world and you know, when matches is nice and, you know, maybe cash here and there. But the Philippines, they're not letting anyone come enter these events without them being a very, very, very good player. And that's what we see again from another young one here in Anthony Raga. As for Chang's break, Nothing doing, apart from angst. the push out here and the problem with this is you know leaving something to attack with maybe on the cross corner bank but the worry I would have is putting myself in a position to where I get it back and I'm taking away the worst of it can tell you Chang's celebrated fellow countryman Ko Ping Chung has just started out on table 23 against Kalin Felix Stefanov of Bulgaria and Ko has won the first rack. Remember that defeat by a Turkish opponent earlier on today? It means that Ko is battling away on the one lost side, which is an accustom for him. Yeah, you say Turkish and maybe Turkish descent, but a player that was raised here in Germany and a very, very good player in Can Salim came to the States a few years ago. Wow, what a role that may turn some things around. And that's what I was afraid of for Chang, putting himself in a position where he was a huge underdog from this push-out situation. But Ken Salim can play, and I can't remember exactly how deep he ran here last year, but he almost 100%. He made the final 64, maybe the final 32. Yes, in many respects, he's playing on home soil, feels entirely comfortable here. As we said, he is representing Turkey, but Germany, the home base. Yeah, I think he resides about four hours away, three to four hours away from Fulda. Okay, a lot going on here. Did get that angle, and the six does pass the eight, but with an impeding nine ball, he's got to get good position here on the six to get back to the seven. Effortless stroke and 
used to seeing from Chang. He has been a world-class player. Not showing it in this match, but he's been there at the business end of massive tournaments. You don't want to give him any quarter, any encouragement. Two balls away from 6-4, and it seems like Matt shouldn't have been that close through 10 games. Just the feeling I, I would get, but... Like you said, Phil, doesn't take much, and it doesn't take much for Chain to get the proper feeling in the stroke and a little more confidence to maybe make this comeback. Yeah, just two racks in it now. Chang's deficit only a couple at 6-4. Pia Filler on the hill against Huang Nam Pham at 7-5. Benjamin Belhassen also on the hill against Michael Yednak at 7-2. David Lilly and Anthony Brabin locked together at 5-5. Bartos, Roz, Vadovsky. That was the one that caused me all the problems this morning. He's 6-4 up on Ricardo Goodjar. Yuri Plistloff, who gave a... A really good account of himself against Fedor Gorst yesterday. He's won the first rack against Jan Smeels of Holland. Chris Alexander of the UK. He's a winner, 8-4 over Ruben Omar de Campo of Argentina. Coping Chung now 2-0 upon Stefanov of Bulgaria. Noel Ben Said, 6-5 on Florian Vogler. Christian Sadea of Romania, 2-0 up on Damian Massey, who is back on the table shortly after that disappointing defeat by Skylar Woodward. And coping Han, the younger of the three co-brothers, 5-0 up on Elio Samarini. One of the very interesting score before we concentrate on this one. The youngster, Mika van Berkel, has taken two of the first three racks from John Mora. Well, Van Berkel, he gets on with it and knocks the balls in nicely. And if you get opportunity, and just like here with a nice break off and a good look at the one, you get the opportunity, you get the arm going. You don't have to be, you know, the favorite to win these matches. I did say we'd concentrate on this one, but I have to give you this result. Table 15, Pia Filler has defeated Fong Nam Pham, 8-5. Yeah, Pia's a battler. Doesn't give in one inch. All right, looks like he's starting to settle in a little bit. And I tell you, again, we're in such a good spot. Me and Phil, Michael, and Carl, we get to see both tables, different screens and whatnot. And watching Raga break the balls, he's another one of those that can really unload on the rack. and That's a great asset to have. Be honest with you, 6 2 down. I didn't give Chang any chance whatsoever. I thought he was playing far too poorly. I thought Do Taekien was light years ahead. Not so now. Yeah, and it, I think as, as much as Chang has been struggling, just how good Kien's played, you know, with opportunity, we didn't expect any mistakes. and they weren't glaring a couple long missed six balls, though, after a mistake from Chang got him back to the table. And now the best pull we've seen from him this match and maybe the tournament. 
it's the mark of a champion, or at least one of the marks of a champion, that you can win playing nowhere near your best. I'm not going to say Chang is in the driver's seat yet. He isn't. But trailing only 6-5, though Taekien has got unexpected issues. I think he's just left the arena as well, so that gives us the chance to run down all of the, the scores at the moment. It's a still a very busy arena. Loses round two going on right now. Tim De Reuter, 3-1 up on Giuseppe Iacobucci. Flavian Glant, 1-0 up on Mustafa Alna. If you don't know the Flavian Glant story, which we've told you on numerous occasions, but just in case, he was a winner of Romania's Got Talent, the TV show, because he is an absolute wizard with a, a Rubik's Cube. Nick Vandenberg and Thomas Kirsch. They've shared the first two racks. We've talked about Antony Raga making that fast start on table two to lead Ingo Lamberti 2 0. Armin Matmugadi, 5 4 up on Tafe and Tabor. Adam Stankowski has taken the first rack against Dan Christia of Romania. Lots of Romanians here in this tournament. Good to see that. Michael Tokowski, 1 0 upon Zhao Grio. Christina Zlateva has taken the first rack against GJ Oren Goran from the UK. Ashik Nathwani, 1 0 upon Oliver Ortman. Mika Van Verkel, still 2 1 upon John Mora. Coping Han. Handed a defeat by Tyler Steyer. Bouncing back brilliantly. 6 0 up on Elio Samarini. It's 1 1 Paul Taylor and Sullivan Clark. Christian Sadea 3 0 up on Damian Massey. Florian Vergler 7 6 up on Noel Ben Said, who has been in front for most of that match. Still 2 0 for Coping Chung over Kalin Felix Stefanov. Yuri Pliskov, 1-0 up on Jan Smeals, as I said a little while ago. And now David Lilly has fallen behind against Anthony Brabin at 6-5. The toilet break over. How about this break? Oh, all momentum dissipated. Yeah, it's one of the things about sending it below the rack. Ball's flying everywhere. You usually get more kisses. And, of course, these two corner pockets on the bottom of the table. I'll tell you, though, there's some work here. The two, three, four shouldn't be a problem. But then back for the five. Getting to an awkward six ball that lays just above the nine. Referee will be over shortly to remove the template, but certainly Kian does not have to wait on that. Yes, each official is in charge of racking the balls on four tables, so at times when racks finish simultaneously, they can be rushed off their feet. Yeah, needs to get, you know, probably somewhat heavy on the pink four, somewhat straight for a draw stroke to get to the five. Uh, maybe a little short of his mark, but he's okay.
after seeing Chang win the last three racks. Dote Kien wants to make the most of this, and it looks as though he might have come up a little straight. Yeah, and straight's a big issue. I don't know if the six goes by the nine in the lower left. It certainly doesn't pass the eight in the lower right. And a little angle on the purple five wouldn't have been a problem to get, you know, for the green in the one of the middle side pockets. But now, you have to really force the work on the cue ball and take much more of a shot on the green six. I'm guessing it does go to the lower lower left by the nine. kind of creeping towards that rail so again that was the work in the rack and it, it's led to more work in the rack now falling on the rail with the cue ball under pressure trying to stave off a fight back this is just the kind of shot you don't want yeah he's been uh, pretty aggressive with the strokes most of the time and don't mean really overhitting the ball, but just staying very confident, right? So no time to try and baby one in. Is he going to elevate the cue again? No. Okay. The reason for Chang's recovery. Unreliability from distance has crept into Do Taekyung's game in the second half of the match. Watching him play, very confident player, and he's put a lot together and shown a lot in this match. Going to be another one come October that all the eyes of Vietnam and Hanoi City are going to be on, along with many others. Right now, Doe on the hill at 7-5. And that was a really good run out given the circumstances. Jonas Kornmesser has just started out against Bernd Janka on table 17. Kornmesser winning the, the first rack. Benjamin Belhassen still on the hill against Michael Yednak. At 7-3, Ian Pikinyak has come back to beat Christian Reimering. 8-7. Still on the hill, Anthony Braben from Cyprus over David Lilly at 7-5. Bartos, Ross Vadovsky, 6-4 upon Ricardo Goodjar. Yuri Pistlov, 2-0 now over Jan Smeals. Tom Stavely has won the first rack against Tommy Tokov. Or Tokov, actually, to be given his correct pronunciation. And Coping Chung, as expected, going nicely against Kalin Felix Stefanov at 3 0. Not his best break off as far as the results and the congestion that has been left, but did get the one down. Maybe has a corner pocket, but if he doesn't, all this type of congestion, you got to figure there's some type of way to play a pretty nifty safety, whether it be 
play the blue two into the left long rail, kind of let it just softly bank towards the purple, maybe run the cue ball into the six just with a rolling ball. Just from that look he made there, I think that's kind of the shot he's recognizing. Very natural again, just with a rolling ball, cut the two into the side rail, a little above the middle diamond. Let it just kind of roll over off the side rail between the five and the pink four, and then just roll forward into the six with the cue ball. Uh, this isn't going to be enough. He decided to go at the nine, and that was okay as well. Did well there, just swerving the cue ball slightly, and the side he got on the cue ball actually aided in terms of position on the three. four than he wanted. Played a rail first shot nicely. But wanting to get the cue ball off the rail and now can he control going into the seven and hold for the purple? I don't know about that. May have to draw kind of off the seven and the purple. I don't know. Now he's hitting a high ball so must feel good about going into the brown. It looked like a very complex rack. All of a sudden, it's wide open. Checking the stun into the nine just lightly here. I think he could go forward by the nine. Didn't cause any problems for the black eight. One thing's for sure, Chang Yulung has got stickability. When he was 6-2 down, making mistakes all over the place, we thought it was going to be a swift conclusion. Now he's one rack away from making it hill-hill. Dote Kian's lead reduced to 7-6. In matches less advanced, Tim De Reuter leads Giuseppe Iacobucci 3-2. Flavian Glont, 2-1 upon Mustafa Alna. Same score, Nick Vandenberg over Thomas Kirsch. Anthony Raga over on table two. You can see that one on the Matchroom Multisport YouTube channel. As with all of the table two matches, he's very swiftly 5-0 up on Ingo Lamberti. Armin Mahmoudi on the hill against Tafen Tabor at 7-4. Christoph Reinches who won the World Cup with Joshua Filler a few years back. He's 1-0 up on Andreas Daniel. Michael Tukovsky and Zhao Griot 2-2. Two -two. 
and Oliver Ortman, the star of yesteryear. He's 2-1 down to Ashik Nathwani. My ball heading towards the pocket. Oh, this is pretty unlucky. It looks like the brown seven has really got him cut off this blue two. I don't even know if he has a swerve with the rail first, maybe. Blue two also kept the nine ball from going in and seeing a golden break. Two more quick results. Ko Ping Han, no problem beating Elio Samarini, 8 0. Florian Vogler defeating Noel Van Saeed, 8 6, after Van Saeed led for the majority of the match. Looks like the five may play by the eight in the lower right corner. That being the purple five. That's what he's playing for. Could be a little tight. And amazingly, we're just five balls away from a Hill Hill match. Still doesn't feel like it. Should be that close. So definitely feels like it should be closer, but well, I think it's testament to Chang's experience, and also one has to say he's been given a helping hand by a couple of mistakes from Doe when he was very much in command. Cue ball needs to settle just a little bit, so maybe in a little bit of a stretch here. Anytime you're coming out of the corner, no reason to power up and go back and forth here. You can handle a lot on the cue ball. Refers left handed to the bridge. That's why. All on one single rack. Who would have thought this when Doe Taekien led so impressively at 6-2? Chang, extraordinary comeback. He's dug so deep without having any of the, the top gears available. And of course, he's now favoured because he gets to break in the decider. Just to repeat, Jeremy, you didn't see this at 6-2, did you? No, not at all. And for a couple reasons, you know, Chang struggling like he was and, and Kian really putting on a performance that uh, was easy to watch and just didn't anticipate many mistakes, really, or any mistakes from Kian. And he had a couple to get things going for Chang. And now he's got to wait to see if he gets to the table. And just to reiterate, this is loser's side pool. So consequently, there are no safety nets. Whoever loses this rack is out of the tournament. The winner of the rack will go through to play Pius Labutis of Lithuania in loser's round three tomorrow. Yeah, nothing easy there. Labuda's coming off his biggest result in a major event, getting to the semifinal of the Spanish Open. Sure fun to watch him perform. And 
Lost an incredible match there to Mark Beisterbosch. Just asking for one thunderous break and one pleasing result. Mm, cue ball got kissed downward. He's made two on the break. Is he going to get a pocket for the three? In the brown seven kind of making things a little more difficult than they should. And maybe the brown seven giving Kian a lot of hope to get to the table on this rack. Interesting what we'll see here and what he decides. Could come off the right side. His right side of the three, let the cue ball roam up behind the eight, nine, maybe try and control the three where it hits the side rail, kind of hovers behind the brown seven. Again, this is the type of shot you can play both balls, that being the object ball and the cue ball. Don't want to come up on that eight, nine off the back rail with the cue ball, just behind it'll do. Oh, this is a big miss. Really bad miss there. And he tried to play the three into the seven, which I kind of felt like would leave a jump shot a lot more. I thought he would just kind of chip the three. Not really trying to move the brown seven at all. Always good to see matches go close. We had a Hill Hill thriller yesterday. Chua against Hebler. And now, around the same time of the day, here's another. Must be happy with that one. Yeah, he may have left a sliver, but if he did, it's not much. And again, a smart play. Always that rail speed with the cue ball. And that's what you want to look for. And maybe this overhead tells me there's a bit of a three ball there for Chang. Don't think he can really afford, even if he can make it, to play it at a slow enough speed to hold position for the pink. I think he has to play more of the safety speed, maybe coming back behind the purple with the cue ball. Oh, he's hit it thick. This is going to hurt. Had to swerve it a bit. That's why he caught the thick hit. Now, after letting that substantial lead slip, Kanto. Take Kien, do the business here. It's all about conquering nerve. And really all about this first shot. Gets it down and gets position on the pink four. You can see the five very near the seven in the side, the eight, nine. Up the table a bit, but not a problem. Looks bad for the former semifinalist in the U.S. Open, two-time China Open champion. But again, he's got to get back out here, get that, get those feet wet. We'll certainly see him back in form. And a guy that usually doesn't play many poor matches, doesn't always win, of course, but usually there's quality. Former World Cup of Pool champion as well. Yeah, 2015 in partnership with Copin Yi. He's been there, done that. I think in this match, though, you have to say, Do Taekyen has been the better player, but will he have something to show for it? He's three balls away from breathing one hefty sigh of relief. Yeah, perfect angle here, not too much, but enough to move the cue ball easily. Just over for a natural eight to the nine.
I think Chang knows the game, the tournament is up. Do Taekian was 6 2 ahead. In the end, he's mightily relieved to get the win by just a single rack. He defeats Chang Yulung 8 7. One more match to come today here on Table 1. It is Cledio Kachi.